Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about completing the walkthrough for the Capture the Flag exercise, SQL Injection to Shell. In this video walkthrough, you will be shown how to use SQL Injection to help in the creation of a reverse TTY shell. The lab requirements for this CTF are one installation of VirtualBox, one virtual install of Kali Linux, one virtual install of the target SQL injection to shell. Now before we begin the walkthrough, make sure that both of your machines, your Kali and your target, are up and running. You need to also ensure that both of your machines are on the same network and that they can see each other. So the first thing we've got to do is discover our target machine. Now to do this, I'm going to use NetDiscover. So I've typed in NetDiscover space dash I, which stands for interface space now I give it the name of the interface that I want NetDiscover to use to discover all the available machines or devices on this network. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and after a short scan it comes back up and it tells me the results that it has found on my network. I can hit control C to break the sequence and I've got a couple of IP addresses of interest here but the one that I'm really interested in is the 10.0.2.13 and that's going to be our target. Now that we have discovered our target, let's go ahead and scan it for any vulnerable ports or services that may be running on that device. So at the prompt, I've typed in nmap space dash capital A space dash small v space the IP address of my target. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now what I like about this dash capital A switch is that it launches the nmap scripting engine. And you can see here that it ran 151 scripts, and it ran those scripts against that target. And here's what it came up with. We can go down here, and we see that we have, and we can go down here, and you can see that we have a couple of ports that are actually vulnerable. We have this SSH, but we also have our HTTP running on port 80. And that's going to be our low-hanging fruit, and that's where we're going to start. Let's go ahead and close out our terminal and let's bring up a web page. Go over here to the application launcher and I'll click on web browser. In the address bar of my browser, I'm going to type in the IP address of the web server that we discovered running on my target machine. And now that we're here at the home page for this My Awesome Photo blog, you'll see that we have a number of additional URLs that we can click on. We have Home Test, RocksCon 2010, All Pictures, and Admin. Let's click on Test. And up here in the address bar, at the very front of it, let's type in a single quote. Now what this does, it's going to tell us whether or not the SQL database is vulnerable. So we've got that done, and now we're just going to hit Enter. And down here it says you have an error in your SQL syntax. And that's what we were looking for. So your takeaway from this little exercise should be that by just adding a single quote to the front of our URL, we can determine if the SQL database is a vulnerable to a SQL injection. So let's go ahead and minimize our web page. And let's bring up another terminal. For this next step, we're going to use SQL Map to show us all the available databases that are currently running on this installation of SQL. So I've typed in SQL map space dash U, which stands for the following URL. And then we have at the end, we have the dash dash DBS space dash dash back. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Give it a second. And down here, you see that we found two available databases. Now, the one that we're interested in is going to be that photo block. So now we're going to use SQL Map one more time, but this time it's going to show us the contents of the photo blog database. So we're telling it to dump all and give us a batch of everything that's inside of this database. What we're looking for, of course, are usernames and passwords. Let's go ahead and hit enter. So SQL Map was able to use a dictionary attack and crack those MD5 hashes that were currently hiding all the passwords. And it was able to discover that the admin account had a password of password that was spelled capital P, the number four, 
small letter SS, small letter W, number 0, small letter R, and D. We can now log on to that web server as admin with the admin password. So let's bring back up our website on the target. And this time, let's click on over here where it says admin. In the login box, you can type in admin and then type in that password that we captured for this particular website. Let's hit enter. And you'll see on this next page that we have the capability of uploading a picture. So we're going to leave this right here and let's go ahead and minimize this. Because what we're going to do next is upload a reverse shell script. So back over here on your Kali desktop, just open up your file system. And let's scroll on down till we come to the USR directory. Open that up. Up inside of the USR directory, let's click on the share directory. Once we're inside of the shell directory, we're going to scroll on down until we come to the directory marked web shells. Go ahead and double click that. Now inside of the web shells, you have all of these scripts. Now we're going to be looking for a PHP script. So go ahead and open up your PHP folder. And the script that we're looking for is the PHP reverse shell. Go ahead and right click on this script and we're going to open it up with mouse pad or you can use any text editor you want. Inside of the script, we're going to scroll down just past the comments until we come to this first section and we're going to insert the IP address for our Kali and the port that we want Kali to listen on. So I'm going to go ahead and change this here to the address of my Kali machine. I'm then going to change the port over to 4444. Now when I have all that done and I know that it is correct, I'm going to go up here to File and I'm going to do a Save As. On this next screen, I'm going to click on the desktop. And up here where it says PHP-Reverse-Shell, I'm going to change that to just shell. And once I'm ready to save that to my desktop, I'm just going to go down here to the lower right and I'm going to save. I'm going to close out the script, close out my file system, and there on my desktop is the script that we just saved to our desktop. Now the next thing we have to do is open up a listener on our Kali machine to establish the reverse shell. To do this, I'm just going to open up a terminal. And I'm going to use Netcat to establish that listener that we need for when I launch that reverse shell script from my target machine. So I've typed in NC for Netcat space dash LVNP space 4444, which is the port number. So the small letter L stands for listening. The small letter V stands for verbose. The N stands for no DNS domain lookup. And the P stands for port. And once you have that typed in correctly, just go ahead and hit enter. And now Kali is standing by listening for that connection over to the target once we launch that reverse shell script. Go ahead and minimize your terminal. And let's return back on over to our web page. So I'm back over here on the web page of the target. Now we need to upload that script. To do this, I'm going to use this add a new picture feature that's on this admin page. You see it right here. Go ahead and click on that. And now I'm going to browse on over to my desktop. And I'm going to find that shell.php script. I'm going to double click it. And then I'm going to click the add button. There is a error and it says no PHP allowed. That's fine. Let's go ahead and minimize our website. Let's go back to our Kali desktop and let's right click and rename this shell.php script. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to rename and I'm going to call this small letter P capital letter HP just like that. Let's go ahead and rename it. Now let's go back on over to our web page and again we're going to use the back button here and again we're going to browse on over to our desktop and attempt to load that shell one more time. So I've got the shell ready to load. I'm going to click the Add button. And now that was successful. Problem is, I don't have any way to launch it. You see that I can launch these other images here, but I can't launch this PHP script. 
So what we're going to have to do is figure out where I uploaded this PHP script to. Now to do this, we're going to go ahead and minimize one more time our web page. Let's open up another terminal. And again, I'm going to use another tool called derp to find all of the directories that are on the target website. And I should be able to discern from all those directories where my PHP file was actually uploaded to. So once again, we're looking for all of the directories that are available up on this web server. To do this, I'm going to use derp. And I've typed in derp, which is the command space, followed by the URL of the website. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So once derp has completed its scan, you'll see that I have a directory. It's up on the web server inside of the admin folder. And it's called uploads. And that's going to be our target. So we're going to go ahead and assume that my my reverse shell script is inside of that uploads folder. So let's go back on over to the website. So back on over here at my web page, I'm going to type in the IP address, the correct IP address, and I'm going to hit enter to get up inside of the uploads directory. Now once you're up inside of the uploads directory, you'll notice that the shell dot PHP file that we uploaded is present. Now all I have to do to get this reverse shell established is double click that script and our reverse shell will be completed. Let's go ahead and do that. So while I'm up here I'm just going to double click it like that and you notice that you get this error message on the next page. That's a good error message. So now I'm just going to go back on over here to my shell and you'll see that the reverse shell has completed. So now you're able to type in Unix commands and communicate from your Kali machine over to the target machine using this reverse shell. So I can type in ls and that's going to list all the directories and files that are currently available under www.data. I can also type in ls space dash la and that's going to show us all the file permissions that are currently assigned to the directories and files under root. Now if you'd like to know who you're logged on as, you can just type in who am I, hit enter, and it comes back and it lets you know that you are currently logged on as www-data. So the purpose of this particular CTF was to use SQL injection to give us enough access so that we could establish a reverse shell from our target over to our Kali machine. It was not to establish root, but if you would like to continue on, with the process of trying to gain root access by all means do so. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about completing the walkthrough for the CTF SQL Injection 2 Shell. So if you have any questions, got any concerns, don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.